So I'm going to do a quick video on how to use Forescan to program, in my case, uh, Fiesta ST for reverse camera, uh, climate control options on the screen for Sync 3 and the uh, splash screen. So first thing you're going to do is get the Forescan software. So you go to uh, forscan.org, uh, click on the download tab, and right here you can download the uh, Windows, well, in my case, Windows version. Um, I haven't tried this on Mac OS, and it doesn't look like they, they have an iOS version, but I don't think they have a uh, regular OS X version. So anyway, download this guy. Um, I usually just grab the latest, even if it is a beta. And then you're going to need to become a member of the forum. Um, so you can go ahead, you know, get, get your membership so you can use the extended license. Um, so here's the information on how to um, install the extended license once you, um, once you become a forum member. Um, you basically have to go through um, in the Forescan software and um, if you don't have the license installed, it'll have a hardware ID and you can copy the hardware ID to clipboard and then you go into um, this tab here and it's a key generator and you enter your name and um, I believe it asks your phone number but you have to be logged into the forum to have it work and the hardware ID and you get a temporary license uh, they, I think you can contact them if you're a developer or something along those lines and get a longer term license but for this application and you can keep getting new licenses over and over again so it's not like a one-time use but you have to re-up it every few months. Uh, so then once you have it all installed, go ahead and launch it. And this tab right here with a little steering wheel, this is where you're gonna have the, the hardware ID, or once you have your license key, you're gonna load your license key here, and then it's gonna have it restart. So this is pretty much what your interface looks like. Um, you know, here's your, here's your settings, um, whatever units you wanna use. Um, make sure that you are not in debug mode. I actually haven't run this on this computer uh, yet, so you want to make sure you're out of demo mode, out of debug mode. Um, I'm in the US, so I want to use Imperial Units. And um, under connection, uh, da, 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 you want to use, for my case, I'm using a um, USB to um, OBD2, so I'm going to use COM for my adapter and everything else um, should be good to go. Um, so we're going to exit out. I'm gonna make sure it's saved what I did change and calm everything else, okay. And so then we're gonna go ahead and get the adapter and uh, plug it into the car <coughs> and uh, go through how you uh, get set up in the API module to make some of these changes. So to start off, we need to take our um, our adapter, uh, OBD2 to USB. This is an ELM adapter, I think it's ELM327, but it also has the HSMS CAN switch. And we're gonna need to get this guy, go ahead, <coughs> plug him into your OBD2 port, and then plug it into your laptop. One more thing I want to note is that you can see for this particular adapter, the switch is pointed outward to get it in the proper mode. So you want your switch outward to get started. You go ahead and plug in our OBD2 cable. Um, we've got our computer set up, ready to go. We're going to turn the ignition switch on. Launch the Forescan software. And this is going to be hard to show. I'm going to stop for a second. And once you have the ignition on, USB cable plugged in, OBD2 adapter plugged in, you're going to want to go ahead and find it. Launch the software, Forescan software. And you're going to want to go ahead and click connect down here. Saying ignition key on, HSMS can switch in the uh, E or sorry, in the HS can position, which is the outward, like I showed earlier. Okay, it's going to ask you what model. 
model year. So in my case, I'm a model year 2017. I'll ask you what version of SYNC I am. SYNC 3. Everything configured. So now we are all set up. Um, we're connected. Oh, sorry. Now it's connecting. A lot of these DTCs that's showing right here, um, some of those are due to um, using traction control disable. Which that's especially the one that's ABS. That's just stuff you may normally see. And it's basically asking me if it has the um, MS CAN switch. I say yes. That's saying switch it to the MS CAN bus position. Like, okay, so this is one of the points where you need to go down the switch over yet it is several times during the programming process. So I just click the switch um, inboard um, in towards the cable and hit OK. It should continue uh, loading all the modules up and it's asking would I like to save the profile for this vehicle? And we're going to say yes because this is the first time I've done it on this computer. And so now we should be so to change API app settings, we go into this little processor chip looking icon. We click on model configuration as built. And then we hit this play button down here. So now we're gonna change the switch again. And this will be to the outward position. Okay, now that we have the switch in the outward position, we're going to click OK. And now it's throwing a warning out here that you're going to go in, change some values, and there is a risk that you could cause damage or brick the module. So do any of this um, work at your own risk. So it's loaded everything right and this is basically as my car stands with the changes in it. So if you're doing this for the first time, what you want to do is you want to go down here to um, try to find the right icon here. Oh, sorry. You want to go to save all right here. You want to go to save all. Let's do a little demo of it. And you can see this is where I've saved some items before. So. I've saved um, doing climate control, splash screens, and backup cam. You can see all the different loads I've done for the car. So you're going to want to go in, find the file location, the default's perfectly fine, and enter something like my stock API in. That's what I use for the name. You can go ahead and save it. I'm going to hit cancel because I already have the file, but you want to save it as it loads before you make any changes because this will allow you to go back and revert to stock if you make any mistakes or if something doesn't work, you want to save the stock file. So again, once you come into the screen, go to save all, name it something that you'll know it's the original file, and save that. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and load the original file just to show you what it looks like. So here's my stock one that I saved the first time I did this. And you can see up here, these values change. Now this value, this, this third, um, hex value is actually, I believe this is a checksum. This is a value you're not going to edit. This is going to always change. Not always, but it will change if you change any of the first two um, octets. I believe these are octets. I think they're the right size. Anyway, if you change one of these first two hex values, it'll change this, I believe, to be checksum value. So take a look. We're 21, 30, 6, 5, 0, 5. So if I go back to load all, this is my configuration for the backup camera and splash screen change. You can see this value here, the second value in change from a one to a three, and this changed in here as well. And there's two things happening here. Um, I'm gonna go to load the original again. You can see it changed this value, this value, and this value. And that's because this is doing two things. This is changing the backup setting for the backup camera and it's changing for the splash screen. 
So let's do this is the splash screen change only. Let's see what we have here. We only changed this guy right here from a five to a three. I'll show you that again. We'll go back to stock. Here's stock. You got 20, 2130 6505. Splash screen only. 2130 6503. So changing that one value to a three will give you the ST boot up splash screen on your SYNC 3 when you come up. So the next thing you do, if you want to go ahead and enable the backup camera, watch what it does. You're going to see two more values change. You're going to see this guy change to a three, and I believe this guy changes to a one. Yes, so the backup camera enabling is changing this guy to a three, and this guy to a one. I can't remember off the top of my head. One of these sets the, um, the auto uh, dim features and one of these actually enables the backup camera So on a 2017 with sync 3 if you make the, this this second value to a 3 change it to a 3 and The second octet change it the second value to 1 and then the last value to a 3 you'll get the ST boot up splash screen and the um, Sorry and the backup camera with auto dim so once you have these values loaded, um, you're gonna go to write all. So what we'll go ahead and do, I'll sequence through the whole thing. I'm gonna load it back to stock. Okay, we're gonna go to write all. So you can see how that checksum value will change. Yeah, it's saying, hey, you sure you wanna do this? Yes, and we're gonna write the whole thing. So now I've gone back to stock. It said block successfully programmed. Turn the ignition on and off. The car will actually boot. And it's booting with a splash screen right now because um so we reprogrammed or we think we reprogrammed back to stock. And we have not, that was the reverse camera, we have not power cycled the car yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check to make sure I did the right values again. So we're going to go back to load all. We're going to click on my stock one. And that is definitely the stock. So we're going to click to write all. Yes. Okay. And it wrote it back to stock. And what we didn't do is we didn't um, reset the power. There it goes. So it's coming back up to the Ford logo. So it came up with a Ford logo like factory and we're going to go ahead. I just put it in reverse. No backup camera. So now we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to change the settings back, but I'm going to get rid of this light on the uh, on my camera right now. Okay, sorry about that. I'm still it's dark here right now. I'm trying to get the best video and I accidentally had the light on. So, okay, now we're going to go back to the config file I had for splash screen and backup camera. So there we go. Splash screen, backup cam. And you can see it changed all the values. And we're going to write all. Said, yep, changing things. And it's going to power cycle. There's the ST splash screen. Okay, so we got the STI splash screen going. And then we're going to go ahead and put it in reverse. Let's see if we got a backup camera. So everything went. Now you can see that it's in the climate control mode. So that's another mode we can get. And I made a mistake uh, when I was going through this. I had to bring up one of my files for the changes. And the climate control, you can see here, is done by changing this character to three, which is the one that I thought was for the splash screen. But it's actually this guy right here to three enables the climate control. 
I believe it was changing that guy to three, and you also had to change this value here, 70, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and change the second value of the octet to two, and that is this guy. Track down the right one. Sorry, I'm trying to use the camera and the computer at the same time. So it's this guy right here, and you're changing this value to two, and that'll enable the climate control of the screen. It actually works, everything's functional. Um, you can see that the dual zone here um, isn't functional because this car doesn't have it, but all these. And then to get the splash screen, it is 70-0-0201, and that is right here, and you go ahead and change this value, this capital X I have, you change that to whatever splash screen you want to enable, so in this case, so that's the second value of the third, sorry, the, the second value of the second octet, and I change it to a B. So you want to be right here. So again, 70, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1, which is this guy right here. Sorry, right here. Change this value to a B, the second value in the second octet. Change it to B, and that'll give you the ST splash screen. So I'm sorry, I, I gave you a little bit of misinformation earlier in the video. Um, I haven't done this for a while, so I had to pop open my little cheat sheet here. Um, and so that's it. And you write it like I showed you write it before. Um, so you really change values in this field, in this field, and in this field to get all of those three functions. So again, I hope this helped out. Um, once you're done, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is once you're done writing, you want to go ahead and hit the stop here, and you want to go back to your car icon and break the connection. And so you're all set now, you can shut everything off and nothing's still linked, it's all shut down properly. So that's how you uh, use Forcecan to change things in the Sync 3.